thermal discharge from hospital last week. Okay, thank you. Praise God. Okay, welcome to our lecture on John Huss. If you haven't subscribed, you press the bell button and subscribe to the channel. You will be updated about our lectures, Protestant Reformation. We need to understand this background, John Wycliffe, John Huss, Cathars, Petrobrusians, and uh, Waldensians. Today we look at John Huss. We have already studied John Wycliffe and today Truth Conquers, John Huss, reformer of Prague, Prague University. The reformation movement launched by Wycliffe and his low lords in England was intensely opposed and fiercely persecuted by the Roman church. Do you remember on Friday we discussed about Lollard's movement? Lollard's were the disciples of uh, John Wycliffe. So the reformation movement launched by this John Wycliffe and his followers, the Lollard's disciples in England was intensely opposed and fiercely persecuted by the Roman church because they became a threat to the church and they made all possible ways to uh, oppress them. And some of them were killed by the way. The reformation movement was largely driven underground in the British Isles. But Wycliffe's teachings spread to Bohemia where they resulted in a dynamic revival. John Wycliffe, we studied on Friday, though he died, his teachings brought a great re revival and reformation in Bohemia. The two nations of England and Bohemia were linked in 1383 by the marriage of Anne of Bohemia to King Richard II of England. Look at it here. John Wycliffe's teachings predominantly spread in Bohemia and now the King Richard Two of England married to this Bohemian, uh, the Annie, Annie of Bohemia. So the two nations came together. As a result, Wycliffe's teaching spread from Bohemia to England. Bohemian students were, went to Oxford and English students went to Prague University. There is a kind of student exchange. Bohemian students went to England at Oxford and Oxford students came to Bohemia at the Prague University. As we're looking at the pre preparation for a reformation, scripture translations from the persecuted Waldensians, refugees had begun entering Bohemia in the 13th century. These uh, Waldensians were persecuted at England they came to Bohemia for shelter. When Anne of Bohemia married King Richard II, she sent copies of Wycliffe's writings back to her homeland. This lady who married England's King Richard II, she sent copies of Wycliffe's writings back to her homeland. This was the Wycliffe's Bible. Queen Anne's love for the Bible was shared by many of her countrymen. Soon, Conrad Stekna was uh, preaching the gospel in the open air to large crowds. Look at here, open air preaching started uh, in the, in, during the pre-Reformation period itself as a uh, they got the truth and they started preaching on the streets to the large crowds. This was the map of Bohemia. Matthew of John traveled throughout Bohemia preaching against the abuse of the church. His followers uh, were impressed, imprisoned, and burned at the stake. John Millock 
archdeacon of the cathedral and prayed, preached fearlessly against the abuse of the church and wrote, Antichrist has come. Over a cardinal's doorway, he was imprisoned. Even in that 14th century, in the late 13th century, people started preaching, saying that Antichrist has come. Courageous uh, citizens to con confronts corruption. This is the birth home of uh, John Huss. Born in this house, born in the village of uh, uh, Hussein, John has studied for the priesthood and received a master's degree in 1396. In 1402, he was appointed preacher in Bethlehem Chapel. In Bethlehem Chapel. This was the Bethlehem Chapel in Prague, Prague University. John Hurst, when appointed, he was, he studied in Prague University, by the way. John Hurst, when appointed a rector of Prague University at age 34, look at here, at the age of 34, he became the rector, a very highly intellectual caliber, uh, profound scholar. Today we have all the pastors who 10th fail, but that was not in the earlier days. Very scholarly, brilliant people used to come to the clergy. At the age of 34, he became the rector. Also began to preach Reformation principles. Without knowing the Reformation principles, these people were the backbone for the Reformation. Way back in the 14th century, they preached in the common language. In the chapel of Bethlehem in Prague, he started preaching the Reformation principles. Huss translated Wycliffe's works into such exposed the superstitious, fraudulent miracles and the sale of indulgence. By then, the sale of indulgence were very much prominent. John Huss started translating uh, Wycliffe's uh, material and he, he became a prophet during that time. In 1405, Huss denounced the alleged appearances of Christ's blood on communion water as an elaborate hoax. Condemned the sins of the clergy as a fornicators. He had such a great courage to say that these clergy are fornicators, parasites, money, Misers, fat swine, drunks, and gluttons. Someone started sharing, chatting. No voice from my side. What happened? Maybe he, others let me know. Chekuri is not able to listen. Brothers, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, able to hear. Oh, but Prakash was not able to hear. I think he had internet problem. Brother Prakash, check your internet. Okay. Look at this man, John Huss, a great, this is a prophecy. Prophecy is not like that, no, knowing the situation and saying that everybody will die, this and that. We know that every many deaths will come. You don't need to tell. This is not a prophecy. It's already there. Already bodies are on the street. There are no cremation places. Bodies are on the, um, <coughs> these uh, vans running around. One day, two day, they're waiting to get their chance to bury. The real prophecy is something confronting the real structures, the sinful behavior. He was a prophet during that time. He condemned the sins of the clergy as fornicators, parasites. What is a parasite? They don't have a life, but they take some others and squeeze. Money misers, fat swines, drunks, gluttons, who? Clergy. And now he condemned the practice of simony. We discussed about simony, what is simony? Buying spiritual offices and the taking of multiple pay positions without faithfully serving any. He described churches that sold indulgence as brothels. Churches who sold indulgence, he, he labeled them as brothels. What a great strong voice it was. 
much, much before, 100 years before Martin Luther. This was 100 years before Martin Luther. We are discussing. But uh, hardly church history, we hardly know about all these truths. We say, hey, Martin Luther, Martin Luther. Yeah, he's a, an accidental revolutionary. Some people say he's an accidental revolution. Already ground repaired, accidentally he came in that scene. Huss adopted Wycliffe's view of the church as an elect community with Christ. Not the Pope as its true head. And it's not, it was not, not the Martin Luther who said already preceders have laid this theology of the church. They said, who is the head of the church? Not the Pope. Christ is the head of the church. This theology has been already laid by John Wycliffe and John Huss. Huss famous sermons in the Bohemian language received widespread enthusiastic support. Huss believed pastors should be examples of God fear integrity. Today we are talking about integrity. Our dear doctor Alexander is not with us. He's expert in uh, teaching integrity with uh, um, Hagai Institute. He's really Dr. Alexander is a man of integrity. He is worthy to teach, but not so with the clergy. Long, long ago, 100 years before Martin Luther, John Huss talked about integrity. Huss believed pastors should be examples of God-fearing integrity in handling the money, in handling the power, in handling the position in every aspect because during that time, the clergy failed in handling the money and the power and the prestige. They oppressed the poor, the weak and the marginalized. They squeezed the blood of the people during that time. He preached vivid accessible sermons which captured the people's imaginations. Huss was described by his supporters as a passionate reformer. Huss was a passionate reformer. On the walls of the chapel of Bethlehem were paintings contrasting the behavior of the pastors and Christ. Even during that time, John Huss made the paintings on the Bethlehem and the chapel of the Bethlehem where he was the priest of the chapel of the Bethlehem he painted. It was very strange for them, washing the feet of the disciples. The Pope rode a horse. Christ walked barefoot. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. The Pope preferred having his feet kissed. Even now today. The leaders want everybody to be submissive. Most of the leaders, 99% of their sermons are obey the leaders, obey the leaders. They, all the time they take those watches. But hardly they take Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. You know, John has during that time on his uh, Bethlehem chapel uh, walls, he pictured Pope riding the horse, Christ walked with the bare throat, Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and the side by the Pope preferred having his kiss, his feet kissed. You know, those pictures made people to think a revolutionary prophet. Huss insisted that no human institution, including the church, can be ultimate in authority. Including the church. Because the church was the authority during the time John Huss raised his voice against that kind of theological context. Only God has ultimate authority. John Huss' revolutionary uh, ideas help people to understand that God, only God has ultimate authority. In 1410, the Archbishop obtained from the Pope a ban on teaching in chapels, including specifically the Bethlehem Chapel, where John Huss was teaching. This ban Huss refused to obey. In that same year, the Archbishop burned over 200 volumes of Wycliffe's works. Huss reported, fire does not consume truth. It is always the mark of a little mind that is that it 
vents its anger and inanimate uh, objects, inanimate objects, has responded by defending Wycliffe's orthodoxy. Hus was summoned to Rome, but wisely refused to go. He had that such a courage to refuse the papal bull. And now, the papacy strikes back. Archbishop uh, Zinke excommunicated Hus. Hus was actually excommunicated five times, not one time. Hus was described as radical and dangerous. You know, if anybody stands for the truth and speak the truth, even now, they become radicals and dangerous. They will be kicked out of the organization. They kicked out of the places, but they will not be silent. They keep on speaking. They keep on um, challenging the structures. You know, during their lifetime, they may not be able to see the result. But when they die later on, people will realize if. John Wycliffe and John Huss would have obeyed the structures of that day. And you know, today we would not have seen a great revolutionary reformation. They were, they stood for the truth and they were labeled as radicals and dangerous. But the time during the, uh, as the time passed by, people will realize. Huss then openly attacked the Pope's sale of indulgence in support of his war against Naples, Naples. The Pope thereupon placed the city of Prague under a papal interdict because John has become a nuisance for them in the Prague University. This meant that the entire city was placed under an ecclesiastical ban. All churches were closed. No masses were allowed no confession received, no marriages, no burial permitted. Look at this. There was a terror has been created when God's people started speaking the truth. Until this time, Hus had been protected by the emperor, university and uh, nobility from the wrath of the Pope. But with the entire city in turmoil, the reformer chose to go into exile. During this time, Hus wrote, on the church, and he preached in the villages and countryside. He started, nobody could stop his voice. The church was closed, there was a ban, but he was in exile. He ran to the villages, and in an underground, he started preaching and teaching to the rural public of that day. Big man on campus, Perig University. <coughs> Though not a brilliant student, has rose to prominence as a lecturer at Charles University, which still displays his statues. He succeeded in part because of his passion for knowledge. He once admitted, I know that those things I have learned are but the least in <coughs> comparison with what I do not know. Trackery at uh, Constance. A general church council was called at Constance in 1414 to heal the Great Schism. Hus lived during the Great Schism. You remember we discussed about the Great Schism? When Europe was divided between two and then three rival popes who bitterly anti matricized one another, it was this council of Constance, which aimed to bring the schism to an end, that summoned Hus. The Emperor Sigmund guaranteed Hus safe conduct in both directions, whatever the outcome of the case against him might be. However, upon arriving, Hus was imprisoned on orders of Pope John 22. Despite the imperial guarantee of safe conduct, Hus was taken through a mockery of a trial in which he was allowed no defense. Hus had hoped to present his views to the assembled authorities, 
but instead he found himself a victim of a cruel inquisition. He was asked to come. He was assured the protection by the king, but the Pope arrested him. There was a mockery and injustice in him, which condemned him for heresies, which he had neither believed nor taught, including that he had claimed to be the fourth member of the Trinity. See, it was, the, it was and it is the strategy of the church leaders. If they want to kick out somebody, they create rumors. They spill dust on them. It happened to us, it will happen to you also today. This is the same crooked, wicked mindset of the Christian leaders. It happened in Hus. Hus never taught, taught that he was the fourth person of the Trinity. But he was labeled as a cult and he, he was killed. I remember when I left my loving Agnes, still I love, I have a great passion for that organization. I really love that organization. When I left with clean hands in 2011 to Bangalore for my PhD, and uh, many of them created a kind of uh, unimaginable story saying that Venkat is a cult. He started teaching all the cults and even now still people are telling. Why? Because jealousy. They don't want to see somebody growing and they want to send somebody out, they spill. This is Christians will do. I don't know. I, I hardly see any Hindus do. If a Hindu temple wants to send somebody out, they simply sell. But I don't know why. Hus prayed aloud that Christ might forgive his judges and accusers. That's the only thing we, you and I need to do. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they do. They don't know what they do. Jesus did on the cross. Father, they don't know what they're doing. Forgive them. That's what you and I need to do. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they want to do, what they're doing. Hus forgave his judges and accusers under pressure to Rick and Hus declared, I would not for a chapel full of gold recede from the truth. The truth stands and is mighty forever. Hus stayed that he would prefer to be burned in public than to be silenced in private. In order to done all Christendom might know that I said in the end. Even he wanted to declare the truth through his death. On 6th July 1415, Hus was condemned to death and taken to outskirts of the city of Constance to be burned. Hus prayed, O oh, most holy Christ, strengthen my spirit. Give me a fearless heart, a right faith, a firm hope, a perfect love, that for thy sake I may lay down my life with patience and joy. That was his prayer. That was his prayer. On arriving at the execution ground, Hus knelt and prayed again, saying, God is my witness that the evidence against me is false. I have never thought nor preached except with the one intention of winning men, if possible, from their sins. In the fourth of the gospel, I have written, taught, and preached. Today, I will gladly die. Today, I will gladly die. Today, I will gladly die. AD 1415, John Huss burned at the stake. He was tied and uh, straw was spilled everywhere. Has died singing, Jesus, son of the living God, have mercy on me. He was 43 years old when he was burned to death. Younger to me when he died. But a great a revolutionary reformer. Martin Luther didn't die like this. Uh, Martin Luther was an accidental reformer. reformer. But uh, John Wycliffe, 
John Huss, and we need to see some more. Resistance to Rome spreaders, spreads after Huss martyrdom. His followers organized military resistance to the Holy Roman Empire. Remarkably, these vastly outnumbered Husses repelled six crusades against them. It was not, not Huss intention to declare a war against the papal bull with a war with a sword and might, but with the word of God, but the followers took a different stand. They are called as truth conquerors. These Hussites, the disciples of Huss, fought under Huss motto, truth conquerors. They proved that you could take on the Holy Roman Empire and survive. His followers, the unity of the brotherhood survived as an independent church cooperating with the Waldrangians and later with the Lutherans and the Calvinists. The, the disciples of us became known as the Moravians. You know, in the church history, Moravians were the people who gave birth to many mission movements. Moravians uh, have come from this uh, holiness movement. Who are those Moravians? The disciples of us. Under Count Nicholas I, Zendrafur, the Moravians started a prayer train that lasted 150 years. During that extended prayer meeting, 2,400 Moravian missionaries were sent throughout the world. Moravians were instrumental in the conversion of John Wesley, who started a Methodist movement. Look at this one man's influence, John Huss, shook the whole world. Moravian movement came out of the disciples of John Huss. A great mission movement has come from the single one movement, one man, John Huss. Even I was not, of course, I studied church history, but I never went through all these details as I was preparing. I was really encouraged. A lot of good information has come to my mind. In conclusion, you need to listen this carefully. One interesting anecdote this that is that Huss is accredited with making a prophecy at his death. This is prophecy. Daniel, listen. This is the prophecy. He said, my goose is cooked, he said. Huss is the bohemian word for goose, means bottom. My goose is cooked before his death, he said this as a prophet. My goose is cooked. Look at this plate, goose is cooked. But he said, but a hundred years from now, a swan will arise whose voice you will not be able to silence. As a prophet, he prophesied saying that my goose is cooked, I am dying. But 100 years from now, a swan will be born and nobody can silence that voice. Many saw Martin Luther was that voice. Uh, exactly after 100 years of his death, Martin Luther raised his voice. No power could stop that swan. No power could stop that swan. Many saw Luther as that voice. Hence, the prevalence of swans in Lutheran art and architecture. That is the reason in Lutheran uh, uh, churches, you see the swan as an architecture. Lutheran art and ar architecture, you see swan. There is a history behind that. The great man, we keep reading in the literature that I have given about John Huss and John Wycliffe, Martin Luther, Nobody could stop him. 100 years later, John Huss, Martin Luther brought the great reformation and today the church spread across the globe because of this John Huss daring and uh, prophetic voice. May God continue to bless us to be such prophets. He's not simply living and dying and be giving all sorts of haltu-paltu false prophecies. Prophecy is something that 
confirms the situation of the people and helping people to bring change. So the conversion became a business. You accept Jesus, become my member, I get tithe and my, I improve my number. That was not the, that's not the issue. Jesus came into this world to give eternal life, a life that is abundant life, a life that gives salt and light to the society. May God continue to bless all of us to be such great salt and light to the society where the darkness is prevailed everywhere. We need to be, we need to dispel the darkness so that the light of Christ may continue to shine in this world so that people when they see the light they may come and have the anubhava of Christ. May God continue to bless us to go such a spiritual standard so that we can become the movement builders. Okay.